So, I've come back from Germany, managed to finish 14th out of 129 people in the Leipzig Regional, which is pretty good. I went 5-2, none of the x 2s cut, so I was content because there was no bubble or anything, and I got top 16, which meant I got 80 championship points, putting me on 330 out of 500, so I am within reaching distance of Worlds now. Potentially paid trip, I don't know. But because I didn't get anything from the London International, I really don't know. But I'm going to be using the team that I brought to Germany. Now I'm going to try something a little bit different. So please put in the comments your opinions on this. I'm not going to show you my bottom screen. As we're going to find a very highly rated per, uh, player from Switzerland, which is interesting. So this is my team. This is the team I brought to Germany. And I'm not showing my bottom screen. Because basically I came up with what I think is a very, very strong tech on one of my Pokemons, try and spot it from those six. And I think it would be better if I use the move without you knowing what it is. If you really need to know and you don't follow me on Twitter, which you really should, you can go and check it out there. I have posted what it is, but I want to use it. Like, this is what I'm trialing. I, uh, for any new team, I think I shouldn't reveal the bottom screen so you just don't just instantly know what moves I'm going to be using because that's, um, you never know against opponents what teams they're going to be using. So please put in the comments whether you think that's a good idea for the future teams or whether I should just leave it as this one. So I should actually decide my leads now. So it's got potential trick room, so I could um, bring my Murkrow or my Incineroar to stop that. Uh, it's got Arcanine. And so my Milotic looks pretty reasonable. Really haven't given myself much time to think about what I was going to do, but I'm going to go with Incineroar. Uh, Gudra, Gartana, and Coco, and I'm just going to hope he doesn't bring Arcanine. I think I probably should have brought Milotic, because he is going to have almost certainly brought the Arcanine, even though... I have a Milotic, a lot of people seem to bring Arcanines, which I find quite strange, because I don't think Arcanine is that good against my team, especially if you don't know some of the tricks on it. Makes Probably makes more sense in the um, the second game of the best of one, or be the best of three, because there is no second game in the best of one, but this looks like a pretty good lead for me, because I would expect just a Trick Room and probably a Bug Buzz, or probably even a switch out from his Vikavolt, because he is heavily threatened by a Flare Blitz right now. So, this is something that you need to put in the comments and tell me whether this is good or not. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do for this initial video. So, tell me if that's good or bad, but I'm just trying this. I'm going to go for these moves. So, yeah. So, it's a bit awkward not saying what I'm going to do and just waiting for something to happen. But he is going to let his Vicar Bolt potentially take a Flare Blitz. And that's not a Salt Vest. So, he's going to bug buzz, and that Vicar Vault went before his Porygon, so something nice is very very nice is going to happen. That Porygon is not going to set up Trick Room. <laughs> so, Incineroar, showing off its name very nicely. Bringing in Cartana, that's interesting. So, I, actually, this could go pretty well. So again, I will tell you what I'm doing this turn. I'm going to switch to Tapu Koko with Incineroar, because that doesn't reveal any of my moves. And... Depends whether he's Focus Sash or not with his Katana. Because if I switch my Incineroar out, I lose the potential to Flare Blitz actually. And I'm pretty sure I take a Secret Sword. Or Sacred Sword, more like. So I am going to Flare Blitz into Vikavolt. I don't. I don't think that's too much of a shock that I'm carrying Flare Blitz on my Incineroar, but I've showed you Raw now. He's going to switch out his Kartana, and if he doesn't protect his Viker Vault, then he's going to be losing that. And I'll get a little bit of chip onto the the Gudra with the, um, the Porygon with the Flamethrower. He's going to protect, but next turn I can knock out this Viker Vault. He's brought two things weak to fire, which is very nice for me. Now, this turn, is he going to go for the Trick Room? Because he's got his Kartana. So it was interesting he was going to go for Trick Room with his Kartana in the bank. So what else did he have? So he had Mudsdale, didn't he? He had um, 
Oh yeah, you can't see this. He's got potentially Arcanine, Milotic, and Mudsdale still in the back. So I would assume Mudsdale if he was trying to set up Trick Room. So I think that even though I've shown the raw and he will probably attack this turn, I need to stop the Trick Room. So I'm going to raw onto the Porygon and flame throw the Vikavolt. He really should attack. He's going to switch out his Vikavolt into Kartana. No, it is Mudsdale, but again, stopping Trick Room is the priority, because if he got Mudsdale up in Trick Room, that would be very bad for me. So hopefully he's going for another Trick Room, expecting me not to roar again. He's going to get a defense boost, so he will live a Flare Blitz from my Incineroar. So he did attack, that's fine. Ideally this would be Vikavolt, not Kartana. And no Freeze. There's no Freeze, which is nice. So, correctly anticipating the second roar. And like most people, just attack again. Uh, oh, well, not attack again, because they went for Trick Room. Uh, got the Vyko ult, which is really nice. So, here I can switch out into Kartana, but then what I'm thinking is I switch out into Kartana to take the high horsepower. And, actually no, knocking out Mudsdale would probably be my priority. Because then Incineroar looks really nice. So I'm actually going to double up onto this Mudsdale with a Flare Blitz and a Draco Meteor. Now with a um, plus one defense and possibly with an Assault Vest, this is very nice. Um, this might not knock out the Mudsdale depending on how defensive it is. But I am expecting it to because this is a Life Orb Flare Blitz from Incineroar. Now if it's Assault Vest it will live that. So please don't be Assault Vest, else I'm losing my Incineroar. In fact... I think I actually want to lose my Incineroar here, but I'm not going to tell you why. So I, like, I think this is ideal actually, because if this knocks out the Mudsdale, which it does, that's fine. Mudsdale's gone, but I would have been okay if he high horsepowered my Incineroar, and I'm not going to say why yet. Now if I don't pull off the tech in this video, then I'll probably just put up the bottom screen anyway, because... I, don't, I think the bottom screen is much better than not having it, and <laughs> if I never pull off the tech, then that wouldn't be so good. Now, do I roar here again? I think the roar, again, is incredibly safe. But actually, no, there's no point, is there? Because he's only got his Kartana in the back, and he's just protected with his Vikavolt. The only way that would go wrong is if he gets a double protect and trick rooms with his Vikavolt. And that does not matter at all. But I am minus two with my... Gudra now. I don't think that matters. So I'm going to Flare Blitz into the Viker Vault because now my Flamethrower from Gudra won't knock it out. And I'm going to switch into Tapu Koko. Because this way an Ice Beam from the Porygon won't put me in Smart Strike range. So I'll be able to get a Flamethrower off onto the um, Kartana if he doesn't switch out into the Flare Blitz, if he sacks his Vikavolt. Well, he really should go for the Double Protect here, I think, but... Nope, he doesn't. He just lets his Vikavolt go down, which is very nice. <coughs> so there's no way he's living that. He's got his Kartana in the back now. He shouldn't be going for Trick Room at all. He should be going for Ice Beam onto my Coco, which I will be able to take. And it is the Ice Beam. And no Freeze would be ideal. Okay. So I'm thinking a little bit ahead now. So I think I want to protect my Coco and sacrifice my Incineroar. Because hopefully he would go for a Sacred Sword into Incineroar to knock it out. Because he can't Leaf Blade the Coco because I will be able to knock out his Kartana with a Flare Blitz unless he's Sash. But I'm going to sacrifice. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to sacrifice Incineroar. And put it, um, if he attacks into my Coco, then I get a Flare Blitz off into Porygon. And I believe that's a two shot from the range he has left. And I'm going to protect my Coco. Now, I think this can't go wrong. Based on what I have on the field at the moment. So it is going to be the Sacred Sword. Nice. And hopefully, no Trick Room here. If it is Trick Room, then it's still perfectly fine for me. But I would prefer no Trick Room. Okay. This is nice. 
I think we're good. So I'm going to bring in my Gudra. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. I'm going to go for these two moves. So again, please tell me in the comments whether this is good for you not knowing initially with the team or whether I shouldn't do this and you should just look away from the bottom screen if you don't want to know. But hopefully this goes very nicely. I don't want to see a protect from that Katana. If I do, it's not the end of the world. But ideally no protect from that Katana. Lovely. If he's got a sash, who cares? It's gone. And now, watch this. <laughs> I'm going for the Z mirror move on my Tapu Koko. So, if you don't know what this does, I now have plus two attack on my Tapu Koko. And I'm going to turn the move I'm mirroring, which is Sacred Sword, into the Z version of it. So now, I am all out pummeling his Katana. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> and with the feint, he's got no sash. That Katana is gone. And now I've got a plus two Tapu Koko on the field. In electric terrain, and I have Wild Charge ready to hit that Porygon. That was lovely. So, I'm th that was my tech. Z mirror move, Tapu Koko, don't freeze me, that would be so anticlimactic. Oh, come on, now I can't Wild Charge you and show you the strength. Oh, that's unfortunate. But, I, I still should have this, because I have my Katana in the back, and with its own Sacred Sword, but there you go. That was my, that was my secret tech. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? I could flamethrower myself to thaw me, but he would then just ice beam me anyway. But I'm going to go for the sludge bomb onto the Porygon, and I'm going to attempt to wild charge the Porygon. So it would have been so much more hype if I'd have been able to get that wild, char wild charge off onto the Porygon. I think I live another ice beam, so I've got another chance to unthaw. Got a chance to poison, which I don't get. So is he going to ice beam Gudra? Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. But that gives me more chances to show you the strength of Wild Charge now at plus two. So I'm going to Sludge Bomb. And hopefully Wild Charge again. And at that range I'm pretty sure it should knock out if I unthaw. Nope, still frozen. That's fine. He's playing to his wind calm, which is um, hoping I stay frozen forever, which is fine. But I'll be able to take another Ice Beam with Gudra. This one's going to freeze my Gudra. Uh, I'll be able to take even more after that. But now I can't get a... Electric Terrain boosted Wild Charge, which is unfortunate, but I'm going to again, Sludge Bomb, and Wild Charge into the Porygon. Nope, still no Wild Charge. I'd have been interested to see how much that did outside of the Electric Terrain, but are we going to get a Poison now, because that's been three. Oh, there's a Recover! He's, he's, he's been very kind and given me all the chances to show off the strength of my Coco, but... <laughs> again, just Sludge Bomb into the Porygon, and Wild Charge into the Porygon. I'm not going to switch out to reset Electric Terrain, because then that gets rid of my plus two attack, but there we go. Still frozen, that's four. So, odd, like, based on the odds, I should um, unthaw next turn, but that's not how probability works. We've got the Poison finally, so that's good. Ice Beam again onto the Gudra. He's going to get some Poison damage, so... Sacred Sword does about 55%, I believe. So, now I'm going to go for the... I think he's going to recover this turn, actually. So I don't want to waste my Draco this turn. I'm going to Sludge Bomb. Well, if he Ice Beams this turn, Sludge Bomb and Poison puts him in Sacred Sword range. So it doesn't matter. So, Sludge Bomb is better. And then, if he recovers the next turn, I'll Draco. He's going to Ice Beam me this uh, that turn. So, still frozen. Five turns. That's fine. That's fine. So... Recover or Ice Beam is fine for me. That's a crit. That's fine. That's just going to put him a little bit under what he would have had without Recover because it just doesn't get him full health, so the crit didn't make a difference. But now I'm going to go for the Draco onto the Porygon just to get a bit more damage before it gets KO'd. I've got the Poison for Sludge Bomb, so that's fine. And Wild Charge onto the Porygon. Such a shame. This, this could have been over already. That's the sixth turn. And it would have been so much more hype because I managed to pull off the Z mirror move properly. But now we're having to drag this out. Okay, now if he knocks me out, that's definitely in Sacred Sword range. So we can end it next turn. Which is good. I'm gonna knock out my Gudra. I could protect my Kartana and again try and like maximize the amount of turns I can wild charge, but 
He could recover. He could freeze my Cartano after that again. I'm not going to risk that. But I have Cartano in the back. Going to bring that in. And a Sacred Sword. If Coco doesn't unthaw for the seventh turn in a row, Sacred Sword will finish him off. So, go for the Sacred Sword. And the Wild Charge. Onto the Porygon. Okay, so we don't get to show off Tapu Coco after the Zima remove. You can just take my word for it that it is a plus two. It should have said on the screen that it was, but the Sacred Sword is going to finish off a Porygon. So, I'm going to leave it at well, one episode because I do actually have an exam tomorrow. And I have exams for the next two weeks, so I don't know how frequently I'll be able to upload. But I will do whenever I find some spare time. Whenever I need a break from revision, possibly. But I'm really glad that I managed to pull off the Zima remove. Secret tech that I had. So that I don't have to keep the cottony of concealment, I guess. <laughs> um, instead of the bottom screen. So please, again, put in the comments whether you think it's a good idea for when I have a new team to not have the bottom screen, or to have the bottom screen or not, to put it in a better way. So, thanks for watching.